Hey everyone, what do we got here today? Uh, this is of course a Proxmark 3. Many of you are familiar with these, I imagine. And this is, this is my Proxmark, one of the ones that you may have seen in other videos. It does have a Blue Shark mod on top of there. And more than that though, it has the conventional RDV401 antennas. That's the one with the little low frequency tuning switches. But speaking of that low frequency antenna, the stock LF antenna, which you can kind of see those thick coils in there, is great for interacting with conventional style credentials, not as useful if you're trying to interact with some embedded credentials that might be down in your hand. Uh, we talk about this in some of our se special sessions. There will be, I don't know when you're going to look for this talk, there will be a presentation about implantable RFID. We've had this presentation built pre-pandemic, and uh, yeah, like it was going to be a B-Sides Orlando. It just didn't happen. Maybe we'll get back there very soon. But the coils on a standard sort of antenna have a real hard time coupling with the very teeny, teeny, teeny coils that you would have in an implantable chip. So for that reason, you won't really see me using my stock Proxmark as much as you may have seen me use this Proxmark. This pops up in some presentations. This has been modified, as you can tell. It has the standard HF antenna, but we have a new LF antenna. This one was the Tom Harkness design. You can see it's a ferrite core, very, very nice windings. And if I come up against my hand, I can get a much better read out of that. I've been enjoying that for quite a while. However, this is another option now. I've got a little prototype here that was sent to me by the designer. This is another ferrite style antenna that can be mounted right up. In fact, using the conventional mounting points. So we don't actually have to sort of chop this is a, it's a very nice one, but this is a Dremel job here. We don't have to chop and cut down the antenna mounting. You can use the conventional four points that are on the actual board. So this is a little video where we're going to install one, test it out, and see who gets the best range. A conventional antenna, the Harkness antenna, or the new one. All right, we've got this new ferrite antenna made by Warren. I'll link them down below wherever they want me, either their GitHub or some other contact page if you want to learn more. I don't believe this is out on the market yet, but I want to try it out. So we've got one more Proxmark. We have a few of these around the office, as you can imagine. And the LF antenna, it's kind of a neat design. The LF antenna is just four points of mounting right on top of the other antenna. So here is our stock low frequency antenna. Really nice field windings, but again, they're very large. Let's go ahead and drop this one on here, which I believe Warren told me it is oriented this way. It's a very neat design on the Proxmark that they, the screws are part of the electrical circuit that attaches the antennas. There we go. All right, we have this Proxmark running in reader mode. Before we try it on my hand, let's see how this antenna does with a conventional HID Prox card, because sometimes the biohacker antennas don't get the best card coupling. Ooh, that one definitely right away. That, that one's clearly working. Let's see what kind of distance that actually involves. Ooh, wow, yeah, so we're, we're getting some reads an inch or so away. That's, that's mighty fine for a conventional card. How about very unconventional credential. Oh, we're getting reads. We're definitely getting reads there. How close can I be? Can I be about a centimeter away? Yeah. So I don't have to do dead contact with the hand, which again, with the, with the stock antenna, you're, you're grinding that into your hand. So this is pretty reliable. We'll even maybe check some graph plots in a minute. Yeah. So very solid reads there. Let's compare that to the Harkness antenna. If we run that reader, let's see how this will do. Okay, we're getting reads obviously, but what kind of distance do I need? You can see it is, it is much more of a tight contact. Still functional. Maybe this antenna has just a little bit more chooch factor. How's this do with conventional credentials? I can read those, okay. So this is it's doing better than I had originally remembered. Well, originally remembered, but still very, very clearly we're getting closer. We, I'm not poo-pooing uh, that Tom's design. This is a very nice antenna, and I really like the fact that it is narrow 
that it's got a little coating over it, protects it a little more, but the narrowness of the ferrite means I can make sort of a custom, I just dremeled this, obviously, because Dremel, the great hacker tool. Dremel's the tool you grab when some other tool went wrong, usually, except in my world where it's the first thing I reach for. Something I may have neglected to test because Warren's antenna attaches directly to the main antenna board on the 401 hardware revision. Does that mean that my, my switches would work to control that? I don't see why not. Uh, if I were to just do a dumb, quick and dirty test, I'm, I'm getting reads reliably here at 125. Does this change sort of the, the tuning? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I can barely get reads once every, I'm not showing you the screen, obviously, but I'm looking over at my console. Yeah. The, the frequency switch definitely seems to impact. How about accuracy versus range? If I switch this to longer range, less accuracy, is that going to do anything at all? Uh, maybe. Uh, you know, I'm getting an extra eh, half a centimeter, maybe. The data is not corrupt, so it is. It's not. It's not killing my accuracy most of the time. Anything you're doing with these prox marks, you really do tend to keep that on tighter accuracy, short range. Because in general, you know, you're always if you're interacting on a desktop like this, you're slapping a credential right on it. If you're trying to do long range things, especially with LF, you know, you get a long range reader. You get a maxi prox, an oversized parking lot reader for a wit or in dollar, whatever credential you're using. But it is neat that because this antenna adapts to the main board, you technically do have those switchable controls. So there you go. I don't know if you'd use it in the field, but it's a neat feature. I do wish that Warren might explore if his manufacturing process can allow for a narrower ferrite core. I don't think it needs to be this size. Something that would allow me to slip a cover back over it. But for first initial tests, uh, yeah, this seems like a really nice antenna, and it is a slightly lower profile, so we definitely have that going for us. Neat design. I do wish that the silk screening was the same orientation as the silk screening on the other parts of the board, but that's just because I'm a perfectionist and dumb shit like that bothers me. That's about the size of it. Warren seems to be making a really nice replacement for your stock low-frequency antenna that has a very cool ferrite in there, worked perfectly fine with my hand implant, uh, maybe even a little bit better than this one, Truth be told, I mean, it's six to one and pick them. They both, they both coupled really nicely against my hand. What I wish I had, uh, I wish I had a non-implanted, you know, injectable. Uh, the real, like the acid test for any of these type of biohacker antennas is if you have the metal shaft of the injection needle, can you get reads reliably through the shaft of the needle? Because that's, you know, going to interfere. There's going to be kind of some shielding there. If you get that, you can very reliably read and write to your hand, no matter how deeply it's embedded. You can almost see uh, my chip in this hand is, is pretty near the surface. This one, before the flesh sort of collagenized, it sunk a little further down, uh, probably because I was fucking with it. And yeah, it's just, it's gotten way in there. It's a little bit deeper under the flesh. So I really used to have to press and grind really hard into my Proxmark. Having one of these antennas, very beneficial thing. Uh, I'd love, I'd love, love, love to see further development on this and see how it goes. So yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm no, not making them. I'm not selling them. Maybe Warren is. Uh, I'll try to put some links down below if you're interested in following up on how this develops. In the meantime, yeah, enjoy this and stick yourself carefully. Stay safe out there.